Hello there, welcome back to our tutorial series on how to master the Google Admin Console. My name is Leon, I'm a Google Certified Trainer and Administrator at the company called Cloudwise, the creators of the Cool School platform. Here at Cool, we help schools on how they can use IT within education. And in this series, I would like to share some of our knowledge and experience with you on how to set up the Google Admin Console for your school. If your school uses Chrome browsers and Chrome devices, then you're likely already managing those within the Admin Console. So it's only logical that at some point, people will also ask you to add applications or approve them. And the same goes for extensions. Now in this video, I will cover how that works, what you should keep in mind, and of course, simply how to add a new app for your organization. Now, as always, of course, we need to navigate to the right spot. So we go to devices first and we go to Chrome. Now in this list, you will see that we have apps and extensions, but it will be listed with users and browsers, kiosks and managed guest sessions. This is important to note because there is a difference between these three options. And if you want to know more about how to manage users and browsers, kiosks and manage guest sessions, you can check our other video in the description. Users and browsers means that we add them to a specific user, while kiosk and manage guest sessions mean that we set an application or an extension for a specific device. This is important to keep in mind because this will determine where and when you will add an application. For simplicity's sake, I'll simply do it for users in this video. Now we see to the left-hand side our entire organizational unit structure. Now, as I mentioned before, it's very important to set up a logical structure. And logically, we are currently in users and browsers, meaning that we should go to our users organization where we want to add any apps or extensions. Now, of course, we can add them on the root level and they will be inherited down to the lower sub organizations. If we want to add an application, we have to click on the button to the right. If we hover over it, we have four options. We can go to the Chrome Web Store. We can go to the Google Play Store. We can add a Chrome app by ID or we can add it based on a URL. Now these last two options, I presume you will only do and utilize when an external party offers it to you when you want to make use of it. And I presume they will also come with instructions. So I won't take a lot of time to explain that. So what I will show instead in this video is go and talk about Android applications and Chrome applications, how you can select them, approve of permissions, and maybe even force the installment of the applications. Now, what's the difference between the two? A Chrome application is something that is then connected to your Google account and will be loaded in your Chrome profile. If your Chrome profile is loaded in your browser or in your Chrome device, then they will be automatically loaded and installed. An extension is something that is added to your browser experience. So an extension adds functionality to how you browse the internet. While a Chrome application is usually an application that requires internet to function, but is something that stands on its own. This can be something that has nothing to do with using the internet, but will be adding certain functionalities to it. An example for a Chrome app, for example, would be an alternative calculator, while a extension would be the read and write application which adds functionality that allows you to select certain text on a web page and have it spoken to you, which would be useful for some students that would require extra assistance when they need to read large amounts of text. An Android application, which we can add through the Google Play Store, in contrast, is really just a standalone application. If you have a Android phone, then undoubtedly you will have used the Google Play Store. In the Google Play Store, you could, for example, download an application like the mobile Word app. So you could open Word on your device. And yes, this would also work on your Chrome device, but do keep in mind that of course, the functionality will be limited given that it is actually made for a mobile device. But you could also find apps here like Google Classroom. The Android application for Google Classroom has some usability features that make it a bit easier to use 
but on top of that also allows for some extra features that are not included in the web application. I will now show you how you can add an application and approve of its requirements. I open the Chrome Web Store, and in this case, I can search between extensions, apps, games, and things that we have added ourselves to a library in the Chrome Web Store. Let's take the Save to Google Drive extension as a good example. Now, if I go here and select this one, then it will automatically add it to the list without giving me a prompt for any permissions that it requires. That is because this is something every user would need to accept prior to using it. Now, what do I mean by that? Um, I have it set now to allow install. Now, let's just say that I force this to be installed, as I've done here, and force it to be pinned in the browser toolbar. And you will see it is added to the right of your address bar. So we have our cool extension, but we also now have added our save to drive extension. When I click it, the first time that I do, it will show up a prompt. The prompt will require us to give permission based on our account. And if I do so, I select my account, it will ask me, what is it that I require from your account? What kind of details do I need access to? And after that, I can go through the list and see if I indeed wish to trust this application. Now, as you can imagine, it is very important to be informed about this and to understand what you're doing. Maybe your users don't know what kind of access they are granting when they allow the extension to get their details. That's one of the reasons why it is very important for you to see what applications your users want to start using and what kind of permissions they require. Maybe by testing them out yourself first, adding them to a test account before you push this or allow this to be used by your entire organization. Now with any application, I can open it and there are some things that I can change about the way it works. Some applications have some additional fields that we can fill in here in regards to the functionality of the application itself. But what we can also do is change how the app has permission to certain parts of our account. If we change it to, for example, allow all permissions, then there will be no issue. But we can also change it to customize permission for this app or extension. By doing this, for the specific app or extension, I can say which certain permissions I wish to block so that a certain application, for example, will not have access to the file system or maybe your online storage. This can be changed for every application, but we can also make a general setting. The general setting we do here at the Options button. This will show us a full page of options that we can set as our default setting. In this case, in regards to how the applications operate, what they have access to, or what kind of permissions I actually wish to block by default. So when we add an application, it will be added to the list here. And we can change things based on the organization level that we are on, and it will inherit any rights we set here on any of the sub organizational units. I can click on what kind of permissions my users have in regards to this application. Now, in this case, it is set to force install and pin to browser toolbar. We can force it to install, we can allow install, or we can block installation. By default, if I have selected an application, it will be set to allow install, meaning people can go to the respective web store and add it to their account. Forcing install, I think, is self-explanatory. And the same goes for force install and pin, meaning it will also show up besides being installed. But when do we use block? By default, you will see that I allow my users to find and add their own applications and extensions from the Chrome Web Store. If I decide that this application is dangerous and I don't want my users to have access to it, I can block it and make sure that this way my users do not find it within the web store. We can also go about it the other way. Instead, we block all apps and extensions except for the ones that we allow to be installed manually. So every app that we have selected. This way, you make sure that your users are unable to add any applications that you don't know about. 
But you, what you will see here is that we cannot choose actually to give freedom to our users to add things from the Google Play Store. Adding things from the Google Play Store works kind of in the same way. I just click on the plus icon and then go to the Google Play Store. But the biggest difference is, is that really we need to select applications that we allow to show up in our Google Play Store, our private Google Play Store, one that you build up for your school. And it's very important that you do this and not give the freedom. We can't give freedom to our users in the same way that they are used to do that on their own personal device because we give more access in an Android application. Then we go and search for, in this case, as an example, Dobe Lightroom. I go to the application. I decide to select it. And what we didn't see before, but we see here now, is all the things that this application needs to get access to. It shows us that there are in-app purchases, that it requires our location, our phone reach status, it needs access to our media files for storage and not only to read, but also to modify it. it. Needs access to storage to read how much there is left. It has to be able to take pictures, connection to Wi-Fi, some other information. If I agree, then I click accept. Here we can also switch between users and browsers, kiosk and manage guest sessions respectively. Now, simply adding them under users and browsers is what you will do mainly. Adding apps to kiosks means that a Chrome device can utilize this application without a user logging in. What this means is that when we open a Chromebook, we will see the apps button on our taskbar. When we click it, all of the kiosk apps that are assigned to this device will be displayed there. Keep in mind that if you want to add an application for kiosks, that some Chrome applications will not be available for this mode. You will see a message when you try to add it when you do so. Now, if you want to go and check whether or not you actually can use the Google Play service, we have to go to Apps, then we go to Additional Google Services. If this is not activated for the organizational unit where your user is situated in, then obviously they will also not be allowed and able to install Android applications. If we check it here, whether or not the service is on, in this case it is on for some, meaning that not everyone can access it, this can actually solve some of your issues when your users mention to you, hey, I actually cannot install any application. Go and check the Google Play service before checking anything else. You may also want to check whether or not the Chromebooks that you currently are using actually are compatible with Google Play. Just about any Chromebook after 2019 was already completely compatible with the Google Play Store, but maybe you have an older model that is still in use. That's not a problem. I will leave a link in the description down below so you can check whether or not the types that you are still using also can use the Google Play Store. I hope that you now know how you can add applications and extensions and what the difference is with doing so. Also that you know what to keep in mind when you are working with this and when you want to maybe force them or simply make them available for your users. If you like this video, do give it a thumbs up and subscribe to our channel. And if you don't want to miss out on any of our future uploads, also do make sure that you turn on notifications. We plan to do an upload every week, so stay tuned for more short how-to videos. For now, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.